Okay, so I've been trying to figure out for a while, how do you shade in the lights? How do you model in the lights, all these subtle little tones? And so I've just done this drawing like a couple of days ago, and I think I've kind of figured it out. So let's have a look now. First of all, uh, I'm using a really light pencil because the biggest thing that's gonna go wrong is that um, you're gonna go too dark. You wanna give yourself the best chance you possibly can because all of the tones in the light that we're doing today are so much lighter and so much more subtle than anything in the shadow. So you really want a super light pencil so it builds up layers and layers of tone until it gets exactly how you want it. And it's, it's much more forgiving. 2H pencils, don't go darker than that. Go even lighter if you're finding that too difficult to handle. And the second concept is to sharpen it with Atelier sharpening like this. I'll leave a link in the description below of a video that does that because you want to have, we're using the side, right? This tip is so small, you're not gonna get much tone with that. It's gonna take you forever. Whereas on the side, not only is it super smooth, but you can cover a really wide area. So it not only speeds it up, but it also makes it much smoother. So it gives you two in one. Right, that's a, a big reason to use it. So long, sharp tip like that, light pencil. Now, also do use it, I recommend, you wanna grip it right at the end like this. The reason why I'm using a candlestick grip, not this tri tripod kind of grip, okay? We want this kind of grip. Because what you're doing is you want a super light touch. So when I'm holding it like this, when it touches the paper, it, it'll fold uh, according to the paper, right? It's not, it's not gonna be stiff and, and put pressure on. The pressure is gonna be relieved because I've, I've got such a light touch. It's almost like a hinge here at this point here, right? So very light and, and you're just gonna go over the paper like this, super light. And it might not look like anything's coming out. That's good because you want to layer, you just keep going and you just keep layering. And that brings me to the next concept, which is you want to make a gradient. So using your speed, right? The speed and the frequency of your strokes and the pressure, you're making gradients. So you start at this pressure, at normal pressure, and then you go really light coming off. And just a bit more pressure and then lighten it off. So you're going from dark to light. You can also go from light to dark. So you gently go from light and then go darker and darker as you go this way, lighter, dark. and you'll do both. You'll go back and forth. But uh, if I show you now a dark and then go gradually getting lighter, as you go, you'll start to build up layer after layer after layer will get you a gradient, as you can start to see it's darker here and it's getting lighter there, that's giving you a curved form. It's giving you the rounder form. What they, what they mean when they say turning a form, that's what they're meaning, is that the tone, when you do a gradient, makes things look 3D, it makes things pop out and turn, right? Or at least makes it look rounded. And so you keep going like this, Right, and you build up towards the light or you go from the light and you build away down towards the shadow. Okay, so that's the next concept is making a gradient like that going across, okay? This type of shading does take a while, but I mean, if you love doing this sort of thing, you love drawing, it's what you want to learn, then it won't matter. And as you get more experience, it'll speed up. But um, you're going to get nice and smooth results by doing this. The next concept I want to impart is that you have these chunks of form. I'll explain this more in a bit, but basically, let, let me give you a chunk. Let me give you like a lozenge. Let's say we've got a lozenge here. Let's get some shadow on that lozenge, okay? Now, this bottom part of the shadow, we can just color in in one color and, and we can safely ignore that. We're not really doing that part today. We're not candling anything in the shadow or the drawing today. But then we are doing the bit in the light. So from here, from the Terminator, you start to come up towards the light in a little strip. Like this, right? In little strips, gradually reaching up towards the light. And what will happen is this will automatically make this form curl around. Okay, and you go from the, you can also go from the light down. Some people prefer to go the light down. I, I do a bit of both. Okay, it's an awkward position for my hand here. We're just creeping up 
towards the light, coming this way. Don't go in a straight line like this when you're shading towards the light. Okay, we want to curve it like this. We want a little strip that curves like this. Okay, so we're actually going to change the direction of our shading. As we do it, we're going to shade, but then we're actually going to turn around the corner like this and come across. Do you understand? So we go like this, and we come around the corner. Okay, it obviously straightens out a bit more when we get to the center. It straightens out in the center, but then it curls around up here as well, right? And you want to feel like you're really going around that form. You want to really feel like you're traveling around it, like a little ant crawling around it. That feel is going to make it feel a lot more three-dimensional, a lot more detailed. And it's just going to give you, it's just, that feeling is going to impart into your drawing and people are going to feel it when they see it. Because there is one style of drawing, and there's nothing wrong with this. Um, and, you know, do this way if you like it. But um, what some people do is they'll have like a, it's like, more particularly when they're painting, they'll have a highlight and they'll just colour this whole area. And then they'll just have a strip here, and they'll colour the whole strip, right? And we colour these strips and then they just fade the uh, the edges. What happens is that tends to flatten things out if you're going to do in strips like that, like going around in around this way. So we don't, if you want to get the real feel and make it feel three-dimensional, you don't want to shade across like this. You don't want to shade all this tone here that you're grouping similar tones together. Um, you don't want to do that round and round in rings. You want to go from here and be crawling up this way when you're shading up towards the light and away. This is just in the light areas. You can do what you want in the shadows and everything like that. Just when modeling the lights, this just gives it a much more three-dimensional feel, okay? So that gives it a far more three-dimensional feel. So you want to have these geometric shapes. You might have a shape that goes like this, like a little strip of baking goes this way, and then another one going this way. And it might all be in the dark area, like in here in the cheek. That's exactly what happens here. It goes up here, and then it turns over into the cheek up here. So, but it's all similar tone, but you don't want to just shade the whole thing one color. You want to actually be going in the direction that you can feel. So you want to go in this direction up here, right? And then this direction go over the top, you want to go over here, this way. Right, so you want to really feel it as you travel over. Pretend that the pencil's your finger and you can feel her face and you're going over her face with the pencil. Like it's your finger and you're rubbing over the top of the areas of the face and really bring it alive and really capture the feeling of it. The more you have the feeling, the more it's going to come through. This is a real feel, feeling based thing. Okay, so that's the next thing. So those are a few concepts that I'll, I'll uh, start off with. Um, Another one is that you want to break this down into little chunks and then you want to look at the geometry of it and then you want to layer the shading on top for each different way that you see the geometry. For example, this area here, I kind of see this little triangle. This is one of the most the more difficult areas of the drawing. When you see, when I show you the actual drawing I did this from the barb plate, you'll see this area to me was was. Uh, quite difficult at first because I couldn't understand what was going on in there. So first of all, it kind of looks like a little Dorito chip, like this, right? It's like a little Dorito chip, but the Dorito chip's got a curve to it like this. It has pointy in, in the mouth area. I'll show you on the, uh, the actual drawing soon. And then it kind of all curves as well, like this. But it also has a kind of flatness to it as well. So it's got a bit of a curve, but it's a lot flatter than the rest of the cheek. And so you start dark and gradually get lighter. Start dark and gradually get lighter. Start dark and gradually get lighter like this. And then it's also kind of going from the bottom up here, starting light and getting dark up here. So I'll also go this direction too. So I'll start dark and I'll go getting lighter, dark here and getting lighter. And what I'm doing is I'm layering two different geometries. I'm layering, I'm, I'm pretending I've got a square piece of paper here 
and then I'm tipping the square piece of paper in um, in 3D uh, space like this, right? And so what I'll do is I will shade the bottom corner dark as getting lighter, right? Dark getting lighter. And what that's doing is that's gradually going to tip it that way. So this little area, this Dorito chip, not only is it curling around the cheek like this, it's kind of curling around, but it's also tipping back at the bottom. So I'm, uh, there's two different geometries going on. So I'm dark, darker to lighter this way so I can curl it around. And then shading the bottom to the top bottom to the top like this, so I can tip it back, right? So I'm layering, so you, is you don't have to do it all at once, you try and do all this complex shading at once, you just layer on top of it, each thing that you notice. So it's got a curve in here where it curves into the mouth, I've also got a little darker there because it hooks around into the mouth, so I've got that hook. And then I'm gonna tip the whole thing back as well. So it's hooking around, and it's tipping back. Okay. Then that's the, that's that little piece. There's lots of other little pieces going on in here, but then you'll add the next chunk, which is the cheek, and then you'll add, you know, uh, maybe the eyelid. But you add these little chunks, and as you add the chunks together, the separate little forms, they'll immediately join up, right? Uh, you don't have to worry about there being lines anywhere. They'll immediately fade in and join up, and the collection of all these little chunks are gonna give you the final effect. So that's a preliminary, that's just the first part to start off. Now we're heading to the second section um, where I show it to you on the actual um, drawing that this came from. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is the uh, drawing that um, I uh, was using as a reference. Um, this is one of the Bard plates, um, plate 53, I think it says. The next set of concepts that I wanna share when I figured this out was so we want to separate the face into little chunks. So let's have a look at this cheek here. It comes down like this. It comes across here, right? It comes across and around here. Up there, of course, it curls a little bit where this eye part is and it goes under here. Okay, so it's this chunk, okay? Now with this chunk, I can see that it's folded back a little bit here. So I'll go dark to the light area, creeping up to the light, right? And I'll go under here and I'll creep up to the light, creep up to the light, creep up to the light. And I'll go around it, capturing all the different bumps and undulations that I see. Now you'll notice there's a bit of a darker spot here. That's part of the nose. You'll layer that on. Don't worry when you say, oh, there's dark and there's a light bit and it's dark. And how am I going to do all this? You just do one bit at a time. So initially I'm just going to do this whole plane here. This plane goes up. If I was a little ant and crawls up this way, right? So it goes up here and goes this way, right? You could also imagine it crawling up this way and then going here like this. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, how you imagine, it's your imagination. Both ways are gonna to lead to it looking 3D. Then later you'll come back and do this because you'll understand that this is a divot caused by the nostril and you'll do that separately. And this will all come in separately. That's part of the Dorito chip I was talking about. So when you add the Dorito chip, this dark patch will naturally put itself in there. So let's go ahead and do that on this drawing here. Now I'll leave a link to the this bag plate if you wanna practice on it as well. And so the cheek kind of, I'm gonna draw lines in. I don't recommend you drawing these lines in because uh, you'll have to erase the lines out after. Not that that's a big deal, but um, I'm just doing this just to help you conceptualize it. So coming down here, right? The cheek then, like I said, comes around here, goes back here, right? Comes up, across here, and then under, right, under the line. Like this. Okay, cool. That's the cheek area. That's the first chunk we're gonna look at. So I'm just gonna shade up. This is a little ant crawling up here and then coming across to here. And it goes back down on this side. So what I might do actually is, it's kind of a cylinder in here too. I might get this side, bring it in and this side. So let's get this side first. So starting with darker pressure and then getting lighter, darker pressure, getting lighter 
and I want to feel it's not just a straight strip of dark and then getting lighter, right? I want to actually do it like a curve, okay? So I want to actually have a dark strip come down and then get lighter as I, as I go around, right? As I go around, this here is the shape that we're looking at. So I don't just want to do a straight line across, like dark, and then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. What I actually want to do is um, it gets dark, and then as I come around, it gets lighter and lighter. Notice how this is the shape that I'm going for, right? So I'm starting here, and I want to actually do that shape with my pencil. So I'm starting here with my pencil, sorry, that's what I said, and coming around. Coming around. I'm not going straight across. I'm curving. I'm, my, my pencil is traveling around in a curve. Okay, very lightly. But I want to really feel her cheek. And I'm changing direction. When I'm down here, I'm at this direction, like this. When I come up to here, I'm at this direction. When I come up to here, I'm at this direction. Change that direction and really feel it. It's all about feel. Get that feel and it'll come out in the drawing. Okay? Now, I want to get this side now. You'll just jump around. Jump around whenever you feel like it. When you feel like, oh, I want to go over here and do this side, go and do it. It's good if you're doing one side to jump to the opposite side. So I'm just going to imagine that I'm a little ant crawling up here and then across here. So let's do it at the same angle. Going up here and across. Up, across. Up and across. Okay, now the nose, it comes over this corner and then goes down like a slippery dip. Whoa, like, woof, like that. Don't go across straight, go down on a curve, right? So we're starting about here, right? As I go down and come out, down and come out. And come out again. I'm not going straight across. I'm going down in a curve like this. Okay, just to help myself feel it. But it does come across. It does definitely translate. You can definitely see a difference when you do it that way. It's so light. I'm really, really shading super, super light. Like I'm barely touching the paper. Don't let that frustrate you. Don't let it frustrate you how light you need to be. Don't get frustrated and start etching it in and going darker. That's the thing that's going to ruin it. Immediately, it's going to be ruined. It's going to be gone. Right? Have the patience to be really gentle and light. I've gone uh, too dark in here, I can see. You can then get your needed eraser and just pick out. Pick out areas. Okay. Just lighten it up. Just got a bit too carried away with it. Okay, super, super light. Okay, so we've done the kind of, we're doing the cheek chunk here. Now I also see this cheek as kind of a V I see this V shape, so it's kind of like, um, let me just erase this part in the middle. Not only do I see that rounded cylinder look that I said before, but I also see this V, right, and, and down like this, this kind of V straight down, right? So I see that, the two planes, one side and the other side, right? Like, like a like a book, like that. So I'm gonna put that in, because I feel that, I'm gonna layer that on top of the cylinder that I felt, because it's looking a little too round and eggy, but that's good, I want that round and egginess, because that's part of what I see, but I also see this kind of plane, and what what it looks like to me, and you might envision, envision it differently, so you'll, you'll shade the way you see it, and the way you envision it, but you wanna layer on top all the different ways that you see it. I see a flat plane coming from the jaw up to here, so I'm going to shade it at this angle, coming up, this angle, coming up, okay, in line with this. Like if there's a line here, there's a side of the book here. So I'm going to do that. From the jaw, I don't know, so it's, um, what is it? 
Which way is it going? Yeah, it's kind of uniform there. Okay, so I'll just go straight up. All right, and put this just to flatten it a little bit. Give the illusion of that cheek. And again, don't be frustrated by the tiny little amount that comes off the pencil. It takes time, right? Especially when you first do it, just be willing to do it. My drawing that I just showed in the previous part, um, I was having fun. I didn't realize how long it took. I was just did it, you know, that after that day. And then in the evening I did it at night. Um, and then I looked at the time, it was four in the morning. I didn't realize I'd spent that long on it. Time just flew because I was having fun, but all up, I spent like seven hours shading that. And it's, you know, not very large, but don't be put off by how long that takes. It really is enjoyable when you're just in Zen and you're just enjoying yourself and shading and it's looking realistic and you're just having fun going over the forms. Um, it's like, you could spend, like, think about it. How long do you spend on YouTube every day? I mean, you could easily spend seven hours on YouTube, right? Uh, or especially over a couple of days or on Netflix or something. Uh, so why can't you spend that amount of time building your skills, making a piece of art, creating something, you know? So yeah, don't worry about the time. Let go of the time. I know I have a huge problem with time and how long things take. Oh, I've, it's just a, it's a curse almost. It's horrible worrying about time all the time. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, obviously I don't want things to take longer than they have to, but if something is gonna be beautiful and it takes time, then that's and so be it. Now, uh, along the top of the cheek here, there's a crease in here and it's coming out around the cheek like this. So let's get that. It's starting here and we come out. Starting here, we come out. Starting here and come out a bit, right? Starting dark in the crease and then getting lighter as I spread out towards this light area in here. Another clue is you can look at the light shape. It looks like this. And then again, it has that V like this and comes around. So looking at that will tell you, okay, I'll shade up this way. I'll shade up this way. You shade according to the lines that you see of it. And that way you will get uh, the form the way you want it to look. Okay, so we've got some cheek action happening right there. I'm just gonna do this curve in here. Again, this is a curve in here, so I'm gonna start up here and ooh, down the mountain, ooh, down the mountain. Okay, again, I'm curving down. I'm curving my, like if I did a little strip of bacon like this, I'm going along this bacon line, like that, out. Down this slide and out over the cheek, right? Hopefully you can see that if that's dark enough. I'll do it a little darker so it looks like this. Curve and a curve here. And then I'm shading down in this direction. I'm changing my direction and coming off the slide like that. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going and just having fun with it. And so I can start up here, go right up to the edge, tip over, and then uh, coming down the slide, okay? Then you can come up over, out of the slide a bit. It comes out and over. So I'll end it by coming out just a little bit. Right? I don't want to darken that too much though because it's creeping in too far into the cheek. Okay. So at the top of the nose, you can do the same thing. You can just tip over, tip over. Okay, let's get another chunk. Okay, this probably needs to be a little darker, I think. Just come up to here. Okay. Now let's get this little Dorito chip that I was talking about. So to me, this is the, I'm, I'm gonna go over this area and then finish the video up there, right? Once once you're done, all these little chunks will get added up and you'll have a nicely shaded face at the end of it. But the most difficult section for me was in here. And so it was really difficult. I didn't know how I was gonna do this and I just had to really break it down. So I think it's gonna be really useful for me to just do, focus on that area because if that's the hardest bit, right, you'll be able to do everything else. For me at least it was anyway. 
right? So I'm going to show you my process of what I thought going through this. So first of all, I see this triangle like thing and it's like a little Dorito chip and it curls into her mouth like this, right? So it curls out of here and comes out here. Now it does have a slight curl to it as it comes out into this side of the face up here. It does curl around here, but not as much as this. This has much more of a curl, almost like a like a, a cylinder coming around. Whereas this has got a bit of a curl, but it's kind of straight. It's kind of a flat area, right? So, I, it, you know, I was like, how am I gonna do that? So we'll come out of the mouth and we'll shade darkly to get the curl here. And then as you get lighter, we'll start turning the corner out to here. Curl really fast, really dark here. And then we'll, as you get lighter, you'll come out. So I'm just gonna do that. Now I'm gonna start darker, not putting too much pressure because we wanna get there by layering. And it's kind of at this angle. I think in, come out. Not too dark though. Be super careful not to go in gung ho, really, really dark. It's just not going to work. And I'm going to come up here really gently. Come up like this, really gently. Because it's kind of coming under her cheek. Here's the cheek. Here, and this is kind of coming under her cheek here, and we'll deal with this other section in a second. So as I come around, feeling my way around, but not too much of a curve, because it is a lot straighter than this one. Then it's also at the bottom, like I said, it's tipping back, so we're gonna get at the bottom here, and go bottom to top this way as well. We're layering those effects on top. Then, I also kind of see, if I put a little bacon strip on here, it curls under like this, right? And so it goes up this way, but then it curls over the cheek up here, like that. So it goes like an S curve, it curls up this way and over this way. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna do the bottom of the S curve first. And it's lighter here and darker here. So, so I'm actually going lighter darker. Forgive uh, my bad shading right now, it's just uh, I'm in an awkward position and that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. And then we go over here so it's darker here and lighter at the top. So darker as we come up. Right. This is a really awkward position. So I'm just going to go up here. And don't worry if you can't really curve it too much. Um, you know, as long as you're just going from dark to light up here, it actually also kind of has uh, its own little triangle up here too, like this. So you can just go from dark and then light up here. You just want to curl around there. The top's got to curl. So you just want to curl up to that top bit to just capture that curl. So I'm going to go bottom to the up here, coming from the side to get that curl, coming from this side, darker to lighter. You can go lighter to darker as well. Okay, now you've got this little roundy bit here, so we can go, it's darker here and getting lighter as it comes around. Darker and then getting lighter. Okay, so we've got this cheek now. Now, this little area also has this bit in the dark that curls up and around like this. Okay, so it kind of curls up out of the lip this way. And she does have a little bump or a little bubble here. So let's just curl it up first. Let's just go here and it starts 
darker. Notice it's, it looks like this. It looks like a little bit like this. So we want to start this direction and then slowly lighten it up as we turn the corner. So I'm going to go here, this direction, and I'm going to lighten it up as I turn the corner. Really light, really, really, I can't stress it enough. If your shading looks so horrible and you're disappointed with it, it's because you're just too dark. You're just pressing too hard, right? Get a much lighter pencil, go on 9H if you have to, right? And it, yes, it's gonna be so light that you'll have to put like 100 layers on there, but great, so be it. You know, do the 100 layers, your drawing will look amazing at the end of it. You know, it'll give you so much practice because it's just gonna be so much more forgiving for you to really make up for the heavy handedness. Cause you, believe it or not, if, if you're finding difficulty shading, it's, it's your hand is so so much heavier and pressing so much harder than you, you might think you're really light, but it's just, you're really actually pressing really hard, a lot harder than you, than you should be. And it's hard to practice. You're getting used to um, being much lighter. Even me, I've only just learned this. So even me, I'm, my hand is still really heavy. Uh, and pressing way much harder than I should too. And plus I'm trying to rush for the video too. Because when I, when I did the drawing, I was a lot slower than this. Really, really slow and careful. Got up close and up detailed and just really, really carefully went over everything. Now this in her lip, this is curling over this way, but this is scooping up under this way. So we want to capture that now. Now you might not see it here as I'm doing it. It's going darker to lighter this way. But in the final image, once you get all the chunks in, it actually does show up. You do actually see it. Even if you don't see it as you're shading, you do see it in the end. Now, um, if you don't want to use the, do it on top of the drawing like I'm doing here, I'm just doing it for speed. You want to do it on white paper, but you also don't want to take the time to have to draw it out. Feel free to just trace this, right? Just trace this with all the shadow shapes in it. Do a block in, a tracing of it, and shade that in. Don't feel like you have to, you're practicing shading here, so I give you full permission to shade the outlines. Uh, sorry, trace the outlines so you can just get to the shading quicker. There's nothing wrong with that because you're doing an exercise. It's not like you're, you know, trying to, claim that you didn't, we, we just, it's just an exercise. And also it goes darker to lighter, just curling over the, this whole area, this whole thing curls in here and goes darker to lighter this way. So let's do that. Let's just capture the whole lot. See, I'm too close. I realized I was too close up here choking the pencil and it's getting too dark. I'm gonna go all the way back here and do that again. It, you know, just keep going over it. You know, if you think, oh, this is too slow, this is too boring. I mean, do you love drawing? You know, do you enjoy doing it? I mean, you can probably sit in front of Netflix for hours. Why can't you sit in front of this and, and do this for hours? Don't you enjoy this? But at the same time, as you get better at it, it's not going to take you this long. It's going to get a lot quicker as you go. But it's so much fun to then look at the final result and see it all shaded. You actually can't wait to jump back in and do it again. Okay, so we're getting all this area in here. We've captured this little bit here. There's a little bubble in here. When, when you'll see it when you get when you, if you download the drawing. There's like a little fleshy bubble just here, and you can capture that as well. We're just acknowledging it, going darker to lighter this way. Right. So I'm just showing you that you can get every bit of detail that you want to get. And notice how this light line that divides these two um, it is already there by the fact that um, you're shading these separate forms. If I shade this a little bit darker so you can see the cheek form, the fat pad of the cheek here. I don't know what all the names of these forms are called, but I have no idea. One day I'll learn them. But for me, I just look at the geometry of them and kind of how 
way look and just layer on top each different version of what I see on top of that piece of geometry. And um, if you go too dark, get your uh, need eraser and just pick it out. I've made a dark line here and I didn't want that. Pick that out. But normally, your effects like this line here that separate this part of the lip from the cheek, you'll get those for free. You don't draw that in with a line. That happens from the separate forms bumping up against each other with the different gradients that are happening. Okay, in this little area in here, this is curled in here. See this curl? It's like a little curling cylinder. Um, but then she's kind of got a scoop out, so it goes this way and up like that as well. We've got this thing going on, so it's like, okay, we've got to try and do both of those things. So it's darker to lighter this way. Let's do this one first. Darker. And it suddenly gets a lot lighter. Kind of like stops. Right here. Right, to give you that bit scooping out. Then, because it's inset, the shadow is on this side, it's darker to lighter this way because it's concave, right? Instead of it normally being shadowed on this side, light on this side, because it's concave. So we go darker to lighter from right to left, right? And this side is too much of a difference here. And we can see there's a bit of shade here. It's mostly light here. So let's just shade this bottom bit. It's a bit of this lip not coming up high enough. So let's do it from here. Darker to lighter this way. Okay. You can see slowly these little forms are all starting to come in. When you sit down and you get in, if you're feeling a little intimidated by a form, go to the easy, easiest forms first. Just do the easy stuff first. As you fill more of the easy stuff in, it'll start to complete the harder stuff for you automatically. Like this Dorito part that was really difficult for me. You might find this part easy, but I found it quite difficult. I actually did the cheek first, I did the chin, I did the lip first. Then when I did the Dorito, all the other forms kind of already added their shape to it, their edge to it, it kind of helped me out a lot. Let's try the little chin now. It's like a round bubble, right? And it's got two little bubbles in it, so it's got a little bum here. It's this whole section, and it's got a bubble here and a bubble here, so you got a little butt, so let's do that. So maybe I'll start from here and I'll shade up to the butt and come around. So let's go here, right, and then fade out. And I'm doing this whole area here, right, I'm shading out to here. And this is the side of the face and then the front of the face. So this is the front and then this is the side here going back. And then again, it goes front and then it goes side going back. So I'm gonna do that with my shading. When I come here, I'm going to go at this angle, right? Up to here. When I go here, I'm going to turn in and kind of shade up a little. And then I'm going to shade back down a little. I'm going to shade down. I'm going to go along this line. I'm going to shade here, shade straight. Shade here, shade like that. Do you understand? Like a step. So obviously we don't need to do this part because this is the shadow. We're ignoring that for today. We're not doing that. And you would come along here, darker to lighter this way. Don't press hard in frustration. Don't push down because you just want to get it dark quickly. Build it up slowly. If this is a, do it when you're really good at this, like when you've had a couple of practices, for sure. Press harder. But for this first time ever doing this, resist the temptation. And if you think, oh, this is going to take me seven hours to do, okay, just do an hour a day. Just don't watch Netflix or don't watch YouTube. And just for one hour a day, and in, in a week, you'll have a nicely shaded face. Right, and and you, trust me, the feeling you'll get is just like absolutely amazing because now you know you can do it. Now it's like, oh man, the endless possibilities. Right, and you can figure out how to make it faster and more streamlined later if that doesn't fit your workflow, if you don't want to make art that slowly, and that's fine. 
Um, but just initially, just do it once at least. I have a feeling that you'll enjoy it so much you won't even notice how quickly the time's passed. And it'll be so much fun, you want to start again. You can't wait to get on to the next one. Anyway, so I'm getting this long bit here, and then I want to get kind of more of a roundness on the chin here. So I'm going to come around from this angle, I'm going to come from here, I come from here. I'm not going to do this top bit because that's in shadow. If you squint your eyes, you'll notice that I'm just going to class that as a shadow here. Oh, that's a bit lighter. Yeah, okay, all right, we'll do this bit. We can curl that in. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, and then curl out this way. Do you understand? A little bacon strip, we're doing this business. So, this business, we're doing this business. Okay, so we're going in, curling, 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 right, curling. Okay, you won't be able to see it as much because this big fat line's in the way. But, uh, I assure you, without that line, it would look amazing. It's super amazing. It's like the best you've ever seen in your whole life. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're coming down from the chin, right? Coming down like this. And then this whole area, we can think of it in two ways. It goes around like this, but it also is like a plane, a flat plane, that's tilting back away from you. This is the front and it's going back away here. So let's do that part first. Let's just go, and then which part's the darker part, which part's the lighter part. So it's kind of darker at the back and lighter at the front. Okay, so we'll go from the back and get lighter. And we can just layer multiple effects on top. So we're doing this tipping back shading first to get it to tip back. And I can start lighter and then get darker as I get back. And barely anything's coming out of this pencil, so I'm just going to have to just sit here patiently and lay, but I'm not going to press harder. I'm just going to sit here patiently, enjoy myself while I do this. Right, it's also kind of, now we want to get the roundness, so darker here, coming out around, just like we did at the top here, coming down. I'm gonna go from the bottom up. Notice how I didn't finish this side of the chin. I did all the way around here, but I just felt like I had to get this plane sorted before I could finish this side. I don't know what it is. You, it's kind of an intuition. You'll get as, as you're filling these in, you'll kind of just feel that in order to get this side of the chin right, you kind of have to get this jaw bit happening. So I'm just going darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. I'm not doing anything fancy, but I am doing a curl as I do it. So I'm just going around curling like like this. <laughs> Excuse me, do you understand? Okay, once I've got a bit of a curl happening, see I've layered two effects now. Right? I've layered over the top, going back in space, and I've layered going over as a curl. So there's two geometries that I've layered on top. So you don't have to do all the geometries at once, you know? Just like this, this is curling under. We've done the curl under, but from here to here it goes back. It turns a corner here. It turns around and goes back. So there's a gradient we have to do across here. So and and we want to so we want to go from dark and getting lighter going up to change our direction. I'm going this way now. I turn around the corner and go this way. All right. So let's do that. And nothing looks like it's coming out of the pencil. Great. Good. Cuz that means it's light and subtle and I can keep getting used to this movement. I keep getting used to turning this corner. And then maybe it's super light here, really light up into here. So we've done the Dorito dark, make sure this is really nice and light and you'll get that division between the Dorito and this, right, as you come up. Okay. 
Okay. Now what's happening here, this is, looks like it's sticking out too much because it's a little too dark. Here, this needs to be darker than this part. So I'm just going to treat it, instead of treating it like a round form now, I'm just going to treat it like a, like a flat plane. I'm going to come down here and across here, like a flat plane now. I'm going to layer, lay, uh, I've done the layering of going over, I've done the layering of going back. Now I'm going to do some layering of just doing a flat plane straight down. And that's actually dark at the bottom and lighter at the top. But it all needs to be darkened down for this top lip to make sense. It has to be dark in the top lip. I'll go from the light side darker, from the lighter side darker. I'm cutting this line here. Try to give me this line in this top lip. Okay, this is also going to cut in the Dorito a little more. Okay, it's going to cut the shape of the Dorito out because I'm shading up to the Dorito and stopping. Looks like the Dorito actually needs to be a bit darker. I can see that now, right? And that's it. Because I've done this part, I can now see this needs darkening. So I can tell what tones need to be here. Sometimes I don't know at the beginning. Sometimes you won't know straight off the bat, but as you do other parts, you'll realize that previous parts that you've already shaded need to change. As so you change, this needs to be darker up in here. Now I can see that. So let's go and add a bit of darkness. Again, we're creeping up under that V of the cheek. Okay, I just felt like this is too flat, so I wanted to turn that corner a little bit, so I darken just the back of it. And dark, dark at the bottom, lighter up here to try and turn that a bit. Okay, so as you can see, the shading is starting to come in. Okay, we're starting to get a build-up of tones, which is just a build-up of our feelings of moving across her face. Our pencil has moved across her face in different lines, different contours, different shapes, right? Going all around her face, like a little ant crawling all around. And just us constantly doing that patiently of all these little forms in her face is going to create that illusion of her, her face being a 3D object, of being a 3D form. Let's look at this area. So from here, that this cheek is separate here. I'm going to cut this cheek out here. I'm going to do this bit of the mouth up here. This little, and so it just goes from dark here to light here. Let's just go from dark to lighter. Darker to lighter up here. Because all we're doing is we're just going to tip it back, right? We're, it's, it's like this, and we're tipping it back in space, right? This is the front edge, and it's tipping back and down. And because it's tipping down, we also want to we'll do that as well. So we go from dark, darker to lighter this way. And notice, let me rub this out. Notice whether it's darker or lighter. So it's kind of darker from the top and lighter at the bottom. Darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. Like this. It's kind of like if you have this piece of paper, right? And you not only want to tip this piece of paper backwards at the bottom, but you also want to turn it this way, right? You want to do two uh, plane shifts. So let's turn it this way first by going darker on one side, lighter on the other, right? So let's do the first layer of movement, right? And then now we want to tip it back. Instead of having to do them both at once, we're still one at a time. Now we want to tip it down. So darker to lighter this way. So we're layering the effects. Okay. And then you can also come at the angle and go this way to reinforce it even more. Okay. As you can see, especially if I now draw uh, like perspective in there a little bit and squash this bit in and squash this bit in. Let's change its contour a bit. Now it really looks like it's 
being bent down into the side, as you can see, right? And so that's all we're doing. So I've bent this side part, I've bent it backwards this way, and I've bent it out this way. And it's out, it's lighter because the light's catching it more. That's what makes it come out, right? So a little bit darker and then, a little, and then lighter as I get to the bottom. Right, and then I'm bending it back this way by doing that. Okay, see how that works? So you just make your way around. We've got this little cheek here. Let's go over the form this way. So this whole cheek section, okay, has got a lot of cool things happening in here. We've got this scoop from the nose, but this coming over here, we've got it coming up from under here like this, we've got it traveling down and then up over here. So we've got the coming down from the eye, and then we've got to come out from here. We've got this big chunk coming around here. That could almost be its own little chunk in there. See that? And I probably should separate that as its own little chunk. You totally just, yeah. excuse me. Let me know in the comments if my burping is so terrible that I should never ever do it again because it's super unprofessional. Let me know in the comments how bad these videos are. Oh yeah. We're gonna curve around here. I think a lot of people don't do videos like this because they're worried it's gonna be boring for people. But I know that when I was learning shading, oh man, I could just watch this all the time. It wasn't boring for me, but I know that they were paranoid about whether or not the video was going to be boring. And I can feel that now. I'm like, oh, is this video boring? And then I just think to myself, nah, don't think that way. This is the video I would have freaking wanted when I was trying to figure this thing out. I don't know why it was so hard for me to figure out how to model in the lights. But there you go. It is what it is. Maybe I just didn't give I didn't just didn't have enough confidence. Um, perfectionist. But that's what I want you to do. Don't be a perfectionist. Just give this a go. If it looks like shit, give it another go. Use a lighter pencil and do it again. And go slower. Right? That's all I can say is if it looks like poo, go slow and get a lighter pencil and try it again. Okay? And don't think that you have to draw this picture by hand. Just trace the outline like this. See this outline? Trace that outline on here, right, on a piece of carbon paper or just colour the back with pencil or chalk and then just transfer it onto a white piece of paper. And um, and just shade it in. Don't worry about having to draw this whole thing. To draw it later. It's great for you to practice your drawing, right? But do it later. Like just if what you want to learn right now is shading, I give you full permission to skip the drawing part and just learn the shading. Because here's the funny thing. When you're drawing, drawing is a reflection of your thought process, your thinking when you're drawing. Every line is a thought, okay? This line is thick and soft because it's a, it's a form shadow going around here. It's supposed to be a gradient, right? This letter it lines are sharper and bolder because this is a cast shadow. It's supposed to be a hard shadow here. It's a much harder shadow than this one. These are thoughts. Every line is a thought. And so you don't know when, like, cause I know from, I'm just speaking about myself. So when I say you, I'm talking about me in the past, right? I had no idea um, what thoughts to think when I was drawing. I didn't know what I was supposed to be capturing, right? And it wasn't until I learned values, I'll link an amazing video about values down below, but it wasn't until I learned values that I understood what a block in was that I understood what to draw or how to draw. Before then, I had no idea how to draw, right? It was values and edges that taught me how to draw. So I, I'm a firm believer that you should learn to shade and or paint before you should learn to draw, right? Everyone teaches drawing first, but I really think you need to at least learn values and edges and, and painting them or shading them like this is the best way to learn them first. And then once you've learned them, then start learning drawing. And by drawing, I mean like straight line blocking, which is what this actual drawing is. It's a straight line blocking. Then get your vibe plates and learn straight line blocking. Uh, I think I, I think Sadie Valerie is like 
uh, oh, sorry, Sadie Valeri is like one of the best teachers of straight line blocking that I've found so far. You can subscribe to her website for like 30 bucks a month and learn it. It's really cool. Um, so, oh, sorry, uh, I should probably explain this. So I'm coming down like a scoop. I hate, you know, I used to hate it. My pet peeve was when people would ramble and they're shading and they start rambling and they're not explaining what they're doing. I used to hate that. And here I am doing the same thing. Okay, so here, scoop. Scooping down, right? Slippery dip. Woo! And then over the cheek like that. Woo! Right? Woo! And over the cheek, okay? Comment, put it in the comments if you hate me being dumb like that. Tell me how much of an idiot I am. Okay, so scooping comes down and then over the cheek. Scoop down. And then over the cheek, over the cheek, over the cheek, scooping down, over the cheek, okay? We're feeling that, we're feeling that. Okay, um, what else do we need? This needs to just come back down. This is flat at the top and it falls down. So let's do that. We start at light and we get darker. So sometimes you wanna go from light to darker because that gives you what you're looking for. Coming down like this. Now obviously this would make so much more sense if I coloured all this in black. Why if I got really dark? Well this actually got a piece of charcoal in here I can use. Just give me a moment. Come here, Mr. Charcoal. Where are you? Okay. Alright, so let's just for argument's sake. Just get a piece of charcoal in here. Okay. Okay, so vine charcoal is just wonderful to draw with. Because you can just rub it out and redraw as much as you want. And just keep going. And it's really cool. And I'll save that for another video. Okay, so I'm just trying to get you to make sense of what's going on there. So there's a the shadow. We're not doing that part, obviously. This is the shading in the lights. But I'm just showing you there. Just in case that bit didn't make sense, it looked funny. Um, there's a shadow here coming out over here. Okay, and then you can just, between this color and this color, if you do the color that's in between them, that's like in terms of light and dark, what the, the, gray, the gray that's right in between those two, it'll just blur this line. Create this fade effect in here. Got like this, smooth it. Okay, that's for another lesson though. We'll do that another time. But I just didn't want you to be confused about what was going on in there. Okay. Alrighty, so another bit. Let's do the forehead. We're going, this is just a whole chunk. It, you know, it just goes around like this. It's a cylinder going across. So we can literally just Come in at this side, dark on the sides, dark on the sides getting lighter, this way. And then lighter getting darker this way. And then we've got this little triangle here, so easy. Just pop, it's just this and this, okay? It's a little triangle. So we just go up this way. We do it in two directions. We'll go this way. This edge is much sharper, this one's softer. So we can get this edge going like this, right? Also notice that the brow goes over this way. So we're gonna layer that on top as well. So it's darker here going lighter over the top of the brow. So let's layer that, because that's gonna make that little triangle look right. Right, so let's get that uh, on the brows as well. Right, and now we can go up here, like this, and then just smoothen it. So there's a bit of a line here. So the color that's halfway between this one and this one is gonna fade that line. So if you just color on top of that line, 
and then the line creates another line, so color, a line of color for that and for that next to it, and it'll just fade. Okay, this little triangle needs to be a little darker in here. Okay, and it's kind of darker to lighter this way. It's darker in the corner, getting lighter. More lighter, getting darker in the corner. Okay, so that. And then you can color over the edges too if they're just a little too strong. Okay. Done. Now we get the nose. Again, this is coming around. Okay, so let's get this part here coming around up to here. And it's kind of this shape. So it's just kind of, and it straightens up here. So I'm going from this angle to this angle. So I'm going from this to this. And it makes a little triangle curling around here. Curl, 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 straight. All right. Curl, curl, straight. Curl, 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 straight. Fade over and then come around this side. And this side is the same. It's this side curling into here. So we then get a little darker as we come here. Get a little dark as we fade off the other side. And so we want to connect this whole form across. We want to go back and forth. Dark, light, dark, dark, light, dark, dark, light. Back and forth, side to side, going over. Curling around. Not going straight across, curling around. So let's do that. I'm checking. I've got, look at the angle of the pencil coming from this angle. Straightening up as I get really light. I'm barely touching the paper. And then I'm changing the angle as I start to get a little darker. Put a little bit more pressure and come down. Do it again. Going over the rainbow to here. And then go from this side, dark, getting lighter. Pressure like that. Cool. So we've done that bit. Now we want to do this little ridge under here. So it's like a forehead and it kind of comes under and it goes straight down. It's like this little, right? The glabellum, I think they call it. See, it's a little ridge underneath here. So let's get that little ridge. Okay, so she's gone from light to dark. It's darkest here and gets lighter coming up. So it's dark at the bottom and lighter at the top. Dark at the bottom of the ridge and lighter at the top. Dark at the bottom of the ridge, lighter at the top. Now it's a great thing that you can't really see it because that means I can layer it. I can patiently just layer it and it gives me lots of room to stuff up and make mistakes without it affecting my whole drawing. Without having to erase or muck around. Okay, so I think you get the point of the shading. I think that's enough of the shading for you to see what I'm talking about and what I mean. Um, please like the video if you liked it. Please uh, share it with people if you found it useful. But I put this on here because this is the video I would have wanted a little while ago when I was trying to figure out how to model in the lights. This doesn't teach you the shadow in here and all, all, in, all the black shadow. This is just in the lights, the modeling part. This is, I just couldn't figure out how people were doing it. I couldn't figure out how to get all the subtle bumps and all the undulations and all the little pieces like the Dorito with the little bubble in there. I couldn't figure that out until I've um, thought to layer the shading over the top, very, very light layers and layering over the top to get the different. So here we've turned it one way and layered it again to get it to turn that way. So you're just layering from different directions. One thing I want to say though, is like we want, I, I think I did, I, I think I said this at the beginning, but I want to say it one more time is, if, you're, if you've got a little chunk like this, chunk of cheek or whatever, just a piece of flesh or whatever, and you're coming up from here and towards the light, you want to go and you want to come up towards the light or you want to go from the light down towards the shadow. You don't want to go across. You don't want to shade across. I mean, obviously here, this part will fold in. That's okay. As long as you're going from the shadow to the light as you go around. But it's like, like this cheek here. Oh, here, for example, sorry, um, I, I explained it wrong. Uh, it's like it goes in bands, you know that this part's darker and then it gets a little lighter here and then finally you got the highlight. 
don't shade in bands like this all in one color and then do a bit darker like this. Don't do bands around it this way. Do little bacon strips going from the dark to the light like this. Do these ones, right, this way. Okay, like a beach ball. Okay, do a beach ball going up and little bacon strips. Don't do, what do you call these stripes? I don't know. Don't do rubber band, like if you had to lay a whole bunch of rubber bands around it over and over and over. For example, let me, let me state it much more clearly um, and let me do it more in front of the camera, right? Is if, if you've got your terminator here, don't shade this way along the terminator, okay? You want to shade this way, you want to shade this way across the terminator, okay? So you want to cross over the terminator and creep towards the light like this, okay? You don't want to be going this way in bands. So you don't want to shade across this way, you want to shade across this way, right? In little strips going up, a beach ball. You want to be doing the beach ball. Sorry, that line's wrong, like that, if that makes sense, okay? And that's how I'm doing it here. So for example, this cheek, I'm coming up and over. I'm not shading across like this. I'm not gonna shade, see this whole shadow, go, oh, this is all dark, I'm just gonna shade across this way. No, that's gonna flatten everything out. It's gonna make that look really flat. You're not gonna have, it's not gonna look 3D. This whole bit of the nose, I'm not gonna go, oh, look, I see this dark tone here, cool, let's just, like that. No, we're going around towards the light or we're going up over the light this way, okay? Now, if that was tilted back, you know, and it's lighter here and darker here, you can do one or two passes this way just to push that back, right? Because you're layering your effects. But you don't do that as much as the curve this way to really curve in to make that form. It's like sculpting and modeling, really. So hopefully that helped. Uh, let me know if it did. Share it with other people. All the rest of it. Thanks so much.